Hi right, guys, welcome to Class Rock Country Music Facts and Trivia. Uh, today's video is some awesome things, uh, stories actually, about Eddie Van Halen that sound made up, but they ain't. Or if you want to speak good English, they aren't. But I already talk good. And we'll start. Uh, he secretly contributed to and rearranged Michael Jackson's Beat It. One of the most fun surprises in Eddie Van Halen's career is his set, a 20-second riff in the middle of Michael Jackson's Beat It. According to the guitarist, he joined in on the songs a favor to Quincy Jones and asked not to be credited or paid for his work. He also wrongfully assumed that no one would ever know it was him on the song. In addition to being a silent contributor to the song, Van Halen helped in another way. After Jackson walked off out of the studio in the middle of the session, Van Halen went on to rearrange what he had already been recorded. Uh, when Jackson re-entered the studio, Eddie admitted to it right away, saying, I changed the middle of your song, knowing he ran the risk of being kicked out for touching another artist's work. Instead, Jackson gave him complete con creative control and loved the changes that had been made. Clearly, so did the rest of the world. He created an indestructible guitar and hated that he couldn't break it. Van Halen was constantly looking for ways to improve his instruments, playing, and sound overall. Do that, he often uh, got caught up in the moment and would sometimes break his guitars on stage. In his search for perfect sound and guitar, he created the Wolfgang, named after his son. A lot of features are updated to create on almost indestructible guitar. For instance, the electronics cavity is heavily shielded and attached firmly to the volume and tone pots. Additionally, some of the wiring is different than most guitars. In an interview with CNN, Van Halen recalled playing the Wolfgang on stage during a show and trying to break it. During the last show, I actually tried to break a Wolfgang and it wouldn't break. I picked it up and I couldn't break the damn thing. I threw it up in the air and later that put it out in the rain. I picked it up a half hour later and it was still in tune. It pissed me off. He buried his original Bumblebee guitar with a friend. Although Eddie Van Halen and guitarist Dimebag Daryl Abbott had unfortunately short-lived friendship, their relationship was surprisingly deep. Just before he was shot and killed by gunfire in a nightclub, Dimebag's last words were allegedly Van Halen. According to his brother, Vinnie Paul, this was their code word for letting loose and having fun. During conversations about which guitar would be lowered into the grave with the casket, Van Halen called to talk with Vinnie Paul. Van Halen brought up the fact that Dime had already shown interest in purchasing one of the famed striped guitars he played with, so he offered to make him a special one. Instead, however, Van Halen decided to give him the real deal and showed up with his famed Bumblebee guitar, the same one on the back cover of Van Halen 2, stating an original should have an original. He told a total stranger confidential information before it broke. When an online forum asked people to recount their memories of meeting Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, one commenter's uh, story stood out. Robin Bailey wrote about this time as an employee at a bike shop in Santa Monica, what happened to be directly next door to a place Van Halen visited. After strategically placing himself in the parking lot at the proper time, Bailey got his chance to say hello to his guitarist. Uh, they chatted a moment. Bailey asked how the band was. Van Halen responded with good. We just finished recording two new songs with Roth and we're looking for a singer. Bailey said Van Halen went on to talk about Hagar's an ability to sing, and the fact that his process took much longer than what believed a singer should be able to uh, turn out. Bailey responded, bummer, before Van Halen walked away. A few months later, news broke that Sammy Hagar was leaving the band, and the boys had reunited with David Lee Roth, who was already working on two songs. Bailey, simply a stranger who started a conversation, learned this information long before the press found out. A police captain voided a speeding ticket Van Halen was given because of his name. Ironically, on his way to a small raceway, Van Halen decided to put metal, uh, pedal to the metal and went around 90 or 95 an hour on a 65-mile-an-hour freeway in Los Angeles. Police officer pulled him over, gave him a ticket. Not long afterward, however, Van Halen's office received a letter that the ticket had been voided. Apparently, the captain noticed the name on the infraction and told the officer, you don't give Eddie Van Halen a speeding ticket. He was never asked to be on Saturday Night Live. It just happened. February 1987, Eddie Van Halen reluctantly accompanied his then-wife Valerie Bertinelli to, Bertinelli to the set of Saturday Night Live, where she was set to host the show. The saving grace for Van Halen was the band room, where he felt he could fit in. Saturday Night Live's house band guitarist G.E. Smith, however, wanted him to do more than simply hang out backstage. Smith convinced Van Halen to do an impromptu performance with the band that night. 
They composed a song on the spot, and Smith remembered being in awe of his talent during the sound check. He did recall, however, that during the live performance, Van Halen made a small mistake. Smith said Van Halen was really torn up about messing up, even if it was something so small that no one else would notice. And I think that's it. That's all I got for now, anyway. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I love Eddie Van Halen. Great guitarist. What I really like about him is when he's on stage and playing big smile on his face all the time. Looks like he's having the time of his life, man. And I just love that. I just, I think that's, that helped make Van Halen because uh, a lot of uh, rock bands that were party bands and they're all on stage, you know, but he had a big smile on his face, just enjoying himself and playing like nobody else can. Love Van Halen. That's all I got for you. Uh, put this one for special for Jeff. There you go, Jeff. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please subscribe. If you have not yet, please like this video. You guys have a great day. God bless you. And I'm praying for you.